Hello viewers, here is a Holmes Stian Fien. I do have the Stian, but for purposes of keeping it into the video frame, I don't have the stand attached. This was a freebie from the trash. Interesting design. Bearings are perfectly free, so my guess is we have a failed electronic control set. Or it could work perfectly fine. It wouldn't be the first time that somebody has thrown out something that works perfectly fine just because it's a little bit dirty. Let's plug this in. Oh, jeez, the plug is all jacked up. Let's get that fixed. Okay. And let's see what this will do, if anything. Seemingly nothing. Let's see if we have power into the cord. Yeah, we do. We have power in the cord, so we know the fuse isn't bad. So it's probably another infamous electronics control failure. Let's see if we can take a look inside here and Note, note any obvious failures, perhaps uh, repairable failures, I don't know. Okay, so we have some kind of bugs in here. Ugh. I hate bugs so much. And then we have the infamous electronic control set. So it looks like we have a 1.8 microfarads capacitor in here. Screw this. Okay. Alright, I'm gonna go dump this out before we get bugs all over the place. Looks like we have a piezo on here for making the annoying beeping sounds. I don't see anything immediately obvious. Nothing looks like it's fried or coming off or anything like that. It does look like this is a standard three winding motor. So if it came down to what we could probably do is we could just omit this electronics control and connect it to a regular three speed mechanical control. And this is actually conveniently labeled low, medium, and high. And this is the um, uh, capacitor. So we could pretty easily just convert it to regular manual control. So let's get the multimeter out and do some testing. First thing we're going to check is the fuse on here. I'm checking for continuity here. Fuse is good. So that's about as far as I'm going to look into the electronics board. I'm not interested in repairing it really. What I want to check is the motor 
motor winding. So we're going to go from the winding to the lead, 213 for high. Not getting a good connection here. 179 for medium. And 143 for low. So I kind of think the motor may be okay. I see another capacitor inside here. So this white, or I mean this yellow wire rather, is oscillation. It's got a separate motor in there for the oscillation. And then this is the lead to the motor. So I think this is actually going to be even more simple than I thought because these are the three windings. Here's the, um, the line. And the capacitor may already be hooked up as it needs to be inside the motor housing here. So let's take a look and see what we have. Okay, we do have another capacitor. And it is going into the motor. There's the information on the motor. Never heard of that brand before. Relatively small motor, showing nothing to write home about. But it doesn't look like anything is burnt up in there or anything like that. It seems to be just fine. This capacitor is a 3.5 microfarad capacitor, which is pretty common for a motor like this, so that's definitely hooked up and ready to go. This yellow wire leads, actually it's both of, uh, let's see here, this, this yellow wire is probably feeding the oscillation and then this black wire that comes out of the motor is returned for both the oscillator and the motor thing. Let's see here. I'm going to look at this for a minute or video. These are the three windings and this is the the return. So what we will do is uh, and it's L for low not line. My mistake. There's oil over here for some reason. So what we're going to do now is we're going to remove these wires from the control board. We're going to remove this from the control board. And we're going to remove this from the control board. And this we can just chuck that out the window because that's not worth anything. So, what we're going to do here is we're going to wire this up manually to one of the speeds. So we'll connect this wire. to one of these wires and we'll strip back these three winding wires get some wire nuts out and what we'll do is we will connect the low side of the cord to the low side of the fan. Now the low side of the cord is the larger prong which is the striped side. So we'll take that striped side and we'll unite it with this wire. not working. And then we'll pick a winding. Um, I don't remember. Actually I can check which one was high. We'll start with low first, which is red. Connect the red wire up to here.
and if my theories are all correct this will give us an operating fan okay now for the big test let's see if it works or if it explodes one of the two should happen runs just fine so this is a classic electronics control failure where the stinking China Metronics control fail well before the life of the appliance has expired. This is exactly why I don't like electronic controls. This happens all the time. Here is a perfectly good working mechanical control. Let's see if we can get this connected here and use this instead. So this is what it's going to look like. Mechanical control set. And I use these leads because these are solid wire and the stranded wire doesn't go in there very well. So let's plug this in and give it a test and see what, uh, what happens. I suspect it'll work just fine. I'm pretty confident in this. What are we on here? Okay. Okay, let's set off at low. Okay, medium, high. Okay, controls are working flawlessly. Now I'm going to have to cut the top off of this to make this fit on here. And then 
will be ready to go. Okay, the repair is complete. The planned obsolescence has been defeated, at least in this one anyways. It's a little out of balance, but that's easy enough to fix. It's pretty quiet, I don't give it that much. It doesn't move a lot of air, but I suspect that's probably because the thing is so dusty. So that's it. I guess for now this is working and usable. We'll do a clean and service video on this as well.